You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna. The Super League is falling apart. Arsenal have officially withdrawn from the competition and have apologised to the fans. I'm not going to read you through the statement because I'm sure all of you have read it. But this is a victory for football fans. It's a victory for football fans all over the country who have made their feelings known about this ridiculous Super League um, and have finally put enough pressure uh, onto those clubs to make them pull out of it. It's not just the fans. The media have put pressure on them. Uh, the authorities, i.e. the Premier League, UEFA, FIFA, etc., etc., have all done their bit. But it was always going to take a concerted effort to make sure that this ridiculous notion didn't go through. What I will say is, obviously, I'm delighted, right? I'm, I'm over the moon that this whole thing has, has gone to shit. I'm, I'm really pleased that all these clubs have eventually seen sense. But can we forgive them for this? Can we just forget about it, brush it under the carpet? I've talked a lot in the last couple of days about punishments that I believe should be dished out to these football clubs for what they have tried to do here. Because they have tried to, through greed and through their you know, desire to become richer, they have tried essentially to change the game as we know it, to completely change the footballing ecosystem, the football landscape. And for me, that's just not on. It's a selfish act. And this can't go unpunished. You know, you can't just say, okay, guys, we forgive you. Welcome back, all of you, into the Premier League again, Um, you know, as part of UEFA again, because this will just happen again. This will happen again three, four years down the line, possibly even sooner. There has to be something done to deter these clubs from going off and doing their own thing, to deter these clubs from this kind of, from moving into this world where they think that they are more important than the wider game. Without the wider game, these clubs don't exist. These clubs don't thrive. And so for me, it's really, really important that some action is taken against these clubs, um, to, you know, to, to put them off doing this again or trying this again. Do I think action will be taken though? Probably not, because as I was saying to you guys earlier in the week when we were discussing this, the Premier League needs these clubs. The Premier League as a product is nowhere near as appealing without these six clubs in it. The Champions League as a product is nowhere near as appealing without these clubs in it. So there was always going to be an element of, you know, uh, being stuck between a rock and a hard place for UEFA, for the Premier League. They obviously had to consider their products and their businesses, um, but at the same time needed to make a stand. Fortunately, fan pressure and various other bits and pieces have have led to the clubs backing out themselves. But I I just don't think that this elitist idea that these clubs have come up with is just going to disappear just like that. I think further down the line, we're going to see this emerge again. And it feels like it's a direction that football is headed for. This time we've been powerful enough as fans to stop it, but will we be as powerful and and as able the next time this comes around to do the same thing? That is my big worry and that is my big concern. Therefore, I believe something must be done to prevent this happening further down the line. It's a victory for fans from an Arsenal perspective. Um, Obviously delighted to see Arsenal join some of the other clubs in pulling out of this competition or joining all of the other English clubs in pulling out of this competition. Uh, Those at the Super League claim that English clubs were forced uh, to leave the competition. Um, Yeah, too right they were forced and good. Um, But, I mean, for me, obviously this is a win, but this does not relinquish our actual problem. And our actual problem is Stan Kroenke. And we, as a fan group, need to come together to get this guy out of our football club. He has completely betrayed us with this. He's not the only one. Other owners, those at Manchester City, uh, those at Manchester United, Liverpool, Tottenham, Chelsea, etc. They've all done the same thing. Manchester City had the sense to pull out officially first. 
Um, I know there were reports of Chelsea doing that as well at around about the same time. But just because those clubs pulled out, it doesn't mean that they should be forgiven for what they've done. And it doesn't mean that their intentions were right from the off. Their intentions were completely wrong and completely out of order. So they shouldn't be made out to be heroes. You know, I've seen Chelsea fans sort of jumping up and down on Twitter saying that they saved football. No, you absolutely didn't because your owner still signed up to it. He just buckled under the pressure first. doesn't mean they saved football because they were part of the problem in the first place. But going back to Arsenal, because I digress, because I'm, I feel so strongly about this subject and I feel so strongly about the game of football that I don't think I've ever been this stressed about something football related in my entire life. Um, but going back to Arsenal, Stan Kroenke has sold us out. Stan Kroenke was willing to completely sell our souls to guarantee himself additional revenue. And we've already been at odds with this owner for quite some time. We've already questioned his motives. We've already questioned how committed he actually is to delivering success on the football pitch. And this is another sign of that. This is another sign of a money-grabbing, greedy owner who sees Arsenal Football Club as nothing more than a cash cow. So yes, whilst we've won the battle in terms of stopping the Super League going through, we haven't won the war yet. The only time we will win the war is when we see Stan Kroenke heading out the exit. And that is what needs to happen. And Arsenal fans need to gather at the Emirates Stadium on Friday evening at 6pm for this protest that is being organised to make their voices heard. We need to go make as much noise as those Chelsea fans did. We need to make... People stand up and take notice of this problem that we have at our football club. You know, throughout the course of the season, there's been so much vitriol and abuse directed at Mikel Arteta, for example. But when you hear crap like this, Mikel Arteta feels like the least of our problems. Some of our underperforming players feel like the least of our problems because I can take Arsenal's performances being up and down. I can take Arsenal not necessarily being the best team in the country. But what I cannot take is us being sold out. I cannot take the betrayal. And Stan Kroenke has overstepped the mark here. You could argue he'd over the, overstepped the mark previously as well. And I know a lot of fans felt perhaps more strongly than me about the negative effect that the ownership was having on Arsenal Football Club. But this is the final straw for me. And there's no going back now after this. This was the, the straw that broke the camel's back. You know, this is the, the one instance that I can never get over when it comes to our ownership. And I will be there on Friday and I will be making my voice heard. And everybody who's got YouTube channels and podcasts and, and has any influence or, or has a voice whatsoever has to be making themselves heard on this. You know, Arsenal fans over the years have been so divided. You know, we've been divided on Arsene Wenger. We've been divided on Unai Emery. We've been divided on Mikel Arteta. But we all have one thing in common, and that, that is that we all adore this football club. And I think the idea of this Super League and the fact that it got to the point it did shines a light on actually how much that, despite the fact that we all disagree on certain things, we actually all want the same thing. And we all want Arsenal to be successful, but not at the expense of selling our soul, not at the expense of relinquishing hundreds of years of history, not at the expense of our club contributing to the downfall of our sport. So this should be a wake-up call to everybody. We should all get together. We should all be on the same side. Whether you're Arteta in, Arteta out, whether you like Granit Xhaka or not, whether you want Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang as captain or not, etc., 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 none of that matters in the bigger picture. In the grand scheme of things, we all love this football club and we all want the best for it. And the best for it is not under Stan Kroenke. All he cares about is money. It's always been the case. As I said to you guys earlier in the week, passive ownership, uh, I've cited that as an issue for Arsenal for many, many years. And I stick by that. I still struggle with how sort of hands-off they are. And, and, you know, despite what they say, and they say that Josh Kroenke takes more control now, and they say that, you know, things are different. For me, it, you know, it, it, it's, they, they've never shown 
that they care genuinely about the values of this football club. They've never shown that they care in the same way we do. And I don't expect owners to care in the same way we do. But what I do expect from owners is to understand that the fans are the heartbeat and the soul of their football club. And without us, you are nothing. So to go and do something like this without consulting us, without even discussing it, is a crime against the sport and a crime against this wonderful institution. And so for me, this is unforgivable. And there's no going back now. So as I say, we've won the battle against the Super League, but the war is still on. And the war is against KSE and the Cronkies. Get them out of our football club as soon as possible. We have to make it happen now. We've heard of resignations all around Europe from sort of people at the hierarchy of these clubs at the forefront of this Super League. Well, somebody's head needs to roll for this at Arsenal. Vinay, another one. Just a businessman placed in a role in which he's completely out of his depth. Completely out of his depth. And someone's head needs to roll. And we might not be able to get Kroenke's head to roll just yet. But over time, we can. Over time, we can make him feel uncomfortable. And the hope is that the collapse of this Super League will perhaps lead to him reconsidering his position and reconsidering his investment in Arsenal Football Club. Because I think that this was Kroenke's plan all along. When Kroenke took full control of the football club, the idea all along was to form this European Super League. It was to branch off and do their own thing, to almost Americanize the sport so that they could pocket all the revenue. Because make no mistake about it, we might have heard about it properly on Sunday and the statements came out later on that evening. But the reality is this has been cooking and bubbling in the background for months and months and probably years and years. It's been accelerated by the fact that the pandemic has hit and has left so many of these clubs struggling for finance. But that's a cause, or that's a that's a you know that's a consequence of their mismanagement over many, many years. So the war is on, and we need to get Stan Kroenke out. And um and Arsenal fans, whether you know, as I say, whatever your thoughts on the team, let's get together, let's make this happen. Because football fans have shown over the last 24 hours exactly how powerful they can be. Exactly how powerful they can be. Because without us, there is no football. Without us, there is no product. Without us, there is no appeal. There's a reason this is the most popular sport in the world. And that is because dreams can be, can be made come true. You can start in the bottom tier of, of football and end up in the top tier. You can be completely unfancied and qualify for Europe. You can go on a good run in a knockout competition and find yourself in a showpiece final. That's what's beautiful about this game of football. And as I said time and time again, my issue was never with the idea of Europe's elite clubs playing each other more regularly. We all love watching top-level football. That's not the problem. Watching Arsenal compete against the best clubs in the world isn't a negative for me. What is a negative is the fact that it was going to be a closed shot. And the fact it was going to be a closed shot was the first sign or should have been what set people's alarm bells ringing because that just shows greed and that just shows teams only looking out for themselves. And that, to me, is completely and utterly unacceptable. Arsene Wenger was talking about it on Being Sports last night and he hit the absolute nail on the head. He talked about Ed Woodward's resignation and he said that his plan obviously wasn't as watertight as he thought. Because if you want to fill up 15 clubs and you've only got 12, you haven't even filled the other three spaces yet and now you've got people pulling out and you haven't got people in reserve, then perhaps that plan was a shambles in the first place. And as I said, I feel like the plan was accelerated because of the pandemic. And because it was accelerated, there were flaws in it that luckily we as fans were able to exploit. And, um, and that's seen it collapse. You know, he also talked about the fact that he would have never agreed to anything that wasn't based on sporting merit. And, and Arsene Wenger, whatever you say about him, he had integrity. There's no, there's no doubt about that. He had and still has plenty of integrity. He also talked about the fact that he was really perplexed 
by the fact that the English clubs had gone for this, more so than everybody else, because he talked about the Brexit vote. He, he said, this is a country who voted Brexit because they want to control their own destiny. He said the Premier League is the most powerful league in world football, domestic league, that is. So why would they want to throw that away? And he's absolutely right. So just to summarise, because I know I've been ranting, I've been going on. The battle is over. We've won it. But the war isn't. And Stan Kroenke needs to be ousted from our football club by whatever means necessary. These football clubs all need to be punished, including our own. It's, it's, it's the right thing. We need to be punished. There needs to be a deterrent in place to prevent this happening again in six months, a year, 18 months, two years down the line. And we all need to come together because we've all seen what happens when we are fractured and when we maybe take our eyes off of what is really the issue at Arsenal, they've gone and planned something like this behind our backs. So take the focus off of the team, off of the players, off of Mikel Arteta. They've not always been good enough, agreed. But there's a much bigger and deeper issue at Arsenal Football Club and it is KSE and we need to get them out.